Let's continue looking at the Django Olauth accounts application. In this video, what we're going to do is look at how to customize what comes out of the box in the account application. So we're going to create a user profile model that has a one-to-one -one relationship to Django's user model. We'll then create a custom sign-up form that extends the one in Django Olauth to capture additional information for the user during the sign-up process. And in the next video, we're going to see how to customize Django Olauth views and extend those, and also how to extend and customize the built-in templates that come with Django Olauth. And after that, we're going to move on and look at third-party authentication using providers such as Google and so on. So that social authentication is coming later on. Now, before we get started, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link to that just below the video. And you can become a member too. We have opened memberships on the channel. And thank you to everyone who has joined. Let's get started. What we're going to do to start with is look at customizing the sign up form. So let's imagine that the sign up form we have here is not fit for purpose. We want to capture additional information from a user when they actually register with the application. At the moment, we have an email, a username, a password, and another password confirmation. And it's very typical that you may want to capture additional information, for example, a phone number and so on. So we're going to see how to customize the form class that is used for this form in this video. And what I also want to show is how we can create an association between the user model when the user signs up. And let's say a user profile model that captures additional details and is linked via a one to one field to the user. So let's start with that concept. Now we're going to go to models.py. And as we can see at the moment, we don't have any models. And by default, when a user registers, it's creating a Django user instance in the back end. Now, what we want to do here is create a user profile model, and that's going to inherit from Django's model class. So models.model. And then we will create a one-to-one -one relationship between the user profile and the parent user model. So let's import the Django user model from the auth.models package. And then we can use the models.one to one field to create that one to one association. Now that's going to be to the user model. And when we delete the parent user, we want to use models.cascade. And that will then delete the profile as well. And we can give this a related name and let's set that to profile. Now, this is quite a common pattern I've seen in Django applications. When you want to extend the built in user model and add additional fields, you create a profile model or a user profile, and then you link that to the user via a one to one field. And once you've done that, you can then create custom fields such as phone numbers, bios, birth dates, and so on. And those will then be part of the user profile model. And I want to do one last thing here, and that's add a dunder string method that will return the username. So this is pretty simple. We have a user profile that's linked to a parent user by a one to one field. And we're going to customize Django Olaf's sign up forms in order to actually create this profile when the user registers. Now, for now, we need to go to the terminal and let's stop the server. And we're going to run uv run manage.py make migrations because we have changed a model that will create the migration file. And then once we've added that migration, we can run the migrate command to actually create the model and create the database table in the underlying database. Now, the goal here is to capture some of this information. For example, we might want to capture the phone number when the user signs up. So at the moment, we don't have a phone number field in this sign up form that Django Olauth includes by default. So how do we add this? Now, there's a setting I want to look at. So let's go to the Olauth configuration section. And if we scroll down here to the sign up section, there is an account sign up form class. This is a setting and we can point this to a form class. And let's take a look at what's noted here because it's important to understand how this works. So this is going to point to a class that is going to be used during sign up to ask the user for additional input. Now, importantly, the class that you point this to should inherit from Django's form class and it should only list the additional fields that you need. So we don't need to include what's here by default in the built in sign up form in Django Olauth. Instead, all we need to do is add additional fields and we implement a sign up method that will handle the logic for adding those fields to the model. So that method is going to allow you to handle and store the submitted data as required. Let's go to VS Code. And if we go to the sidebar here, we're going to create in the core application a new forms.py module. And let's bring in an import here. From Django, we're going to import the forms module. And then we can define a form class. Now, I'm just going to call this custom sign up form. But remember from the documentation, this should inherit from Django's built in form class. So we pass forms.form in. And here we can capture that additional information. Now I'm going to start with two fields that are just on Django's built in user model. That's the first name and the last name. And we're going to make these car fields on this class. 
And then once we've defined those additional fields that we need for the sign up form, we need to implement this method. Remember that came from the documentation as well. And that is a method on the form class called sign up. And that is going to take some parameters here as well as self It's going to take the request and also the user instance. Now I'm going to add a comment to the top of this method. So the sign up method is called after the user is created but before it's saved to the database and that allows you to handle the additional fields that are passed in when the form is submitted and those additional fields in this case are first name and last name. So how do we handle that? All we need to do here is set the fields on the user model. So user.firstName is going to be equal to data, and then we can get the first name out of the form. So data will be a dictionary of data and the key of first name is going to have the value submitted by the user. And we can copy that to the line below here. And I'm going to update this to user.lastName and we can get the last name field from the submission and save that to the user model. And of course, the final step here is to call user.save and that will then save those changes to the database. Now, if we save all this and go back to the terminal and restart the server at the bottom, we can go back to the page and notice at the moment that nothing has changed. The first name and last name fields are not present on the form. And the reason for that is because we now need to go and set this setting here of account sign up form class. So let's copy the name of that and we're going to go to the project settings.py file and we're going to point this to the new form class that we just defined. Now, if we look at where that form class is, it's in the core application in forms.py. So it's going to be core.forms. And then if we look at the name of the class here, it's custom sign up form. So we can paste that in here and that's pointing this setting here to our new form class. And what's going to happen now if we go back to the page and refresh this page is that we now see the additional fields coming through for the first name and the last name. But the other fields that were part of the built in sign up form, they are still present. So what Django All Auth does is it adds the fields on this form class to the built in form. That's important to understand here. Now the question is, is it going to work if we actually submit this? So I'm going to fill this form out just now. So we've got John Doe number six here and we're going to click sign up and that's going to then register that user into the database and log them into the application. That works as it did before, but let's now have a look at the database. So we've now got Beekeeper Studio open and we're looking at the user table here. And notice that we have John Doe number six here. He has been entered and registered into the database. But unlike the other users, we now have the last name column populated because that is now present on the sign up form. And we have implemented this sign up method that has the logic for setting first name and last name. So the effect of that is that when a user signs up, we now have a last name and of course a first name populated in this database table. And often you are going to want to capture that additional information. So that is super useful to know. There is one other thing I want to do in the sign up method. At the moment, we have this new table called user profile and we want to link a user to a user profile model. And that's going to create a foreign key here in the user ID field in the table. But at the moment, we're not actually creating that user profile in the sign up method. There's different ways we could do this. For example, we could use a signal to do this. But I'm not a huge fan of signals in general if you can avoid them. And this is an example of where we can avoid a signal. We have the user here. All we need to do now is create the associated user profile. So let's now see how we can do that as well. And what I'm going to do is take one of the fields, let's say the phone number, and I'm going to add the phone number to this form and we can then populate that field on the user profile. So to custom sign up form here, let's add a new field called phone and that's going to be another car field. And you could use something like Django phone number field here. And we did a video on that a while ago. I'll leave a link just below. To keep it simple, I'm just going to use a car field here. And then if we go to the sign up method, we can then implement the logic to actually create the user profile. Before we can do that though, we need to import the model. So at the top here from core.models, let's import the user profile model. And then down in the sign up method, after we save the user to the database, we can then create the foreign key. So what I'm going to do here is create a variable called profile and we instantiate the profile model. And we're going to pass in the user to make that connection, that one to one connection between the user profile and the user. And then after we've done that, we can set the profile.phone. That's a field on the model. And we can do that by accessing self.cleaned data again. And this time I'm going to use the dot get method. And we're going to try and get the phone field from the submitted data. And if that doesn't exist, we can just default to an empty string. And I've made a mistake here. This should be user profile, not just profile. So we're instantiating that user profile model that we had here. And we're trying to set the phone field on that model to what has been submitted by the user. And if it doesn't exist, we just default to an empty string. 
And the final step here is just to call profile.save and that's gonna then save that profile to the database with that link to the associated user. Now I just want to very quickly go over this one more time. When the user submits the form, this sign up method is called after the user is created, but before it's saved to the database, we then populate the first name and last name fields on Django's user model and save that user to the database. That creates the ID. And once we have the ID, we can then instantiate a user profile and link it to the parent user here using this keyword argument. And then we attempt to set the phone field by accessing the phone submitted data in self.cleanData. So I hope that makes sense. Let's now test it out. We're gonna go back to the sign up form here, but first I need to log out. And if we go to the sign up page here, I'm gonna fill this in with some more information. So I've now filled this in with some information. We have the eighth iteration of John Doe, and that of course is a real phone number. We can then click sign up and let's see what happens. And I need to fill this email field in properly, so let me do that just now. And finally, when we hit sign up, it's hopefully gonna create not only the user, but also the associated user profile. Let's go to the database now that this is completed. And if we go to the user table, notice we now have John Doe number eight, and that has the information submitted. For example, the first name of Johnny, the second name of Doe. Now what we want to test here is, did this create the associated user profile? So if we go to that table and refresh the data, notice we now have a record. And notice the user ID, it's linked to user number six, which is the record that was created in the auth user table. And we also have the phone data here from the form submission. So that's how we can create the user, create the associated user profile and add additional fields to the Django All Auth sign up form. And the reason these are empty is because we didn't add them. And of course, if we go to the model itself, all of these car fields have blank equals true, which means they can be blank when they're submitted. So they're not required fields by default, but you can make them required, of course, if you want to. And here's a quick tip as well. Notice that all of these fields have blank equals true, but only the bottom two, the date field and the date time field have null equals true, which allows null values in the database. Why don't the car field and text fields have null equals true? The reason for that is that Django's best practice recommends that for null values for car fields or any string type, we just set that to an empty string and store that in the database. And that is why here in this self.cleanData.get method, if the phone key is not part of the submitted data, we just default that to an empty string. So you should only set the null equals true flag on fields that are not based on strings in Django models. And for car fields, text fields, and so on, you can set a default value as an empty string if you want to avoid any problems. So we've successfully customized this sign up form class and its logic using Django Oloth. And let's quickly recap the way that we actually achieved this. So what we did was we created a custom sign up form and this is just a form class in Django that defines any additional fields that we want to be part of the registration form. So in this case, we've added a first name, a last name and a phone number field. And then all we need to do after we've created that form is point our account sign up form class setting to that form class. And for the additional fields, Django by default, of course, doesn't know how to save this data. So what we do is we implement a sign up method on the form class, and that is then gonna customize that sign up process and implement any additional logic. For example, setting fields here and setting any relationships as necessary. And you can do this with any form class in Django Oloth. All you need to do is consult the documentation. So for example, we have a login form provided by Django Oloth. You can extend that. And if we look down at this documentation, we have the sign up form that we have looked at, and we looked at a certain way to implement that using a setting. We have an add email form and so on. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I will leave a link just below the video. What we're gonna do in the next video is look at how we can customize the views that are built into Django Oloth and also extend and customize the templates that come out of the box. As you notice here, it's not the most attractive template. It's a very bare bones thing, but it is there for you to extend. We're gonna look at how you can do that in the next video, although we're not gonna go into great detail in CSS or anything like that, but we will look at how to extend that. And finally, moving on after that, we're gonna look at signals and then social authentication with Google, Twitter, and so on. So that's all for this one. If you've enjoyed this content and learned anything and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. I'll leave a link in the top comment under the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And I also have a link to the Django All Auth playlist just under the video. If you have any suggestions for All Auth content that you'd like to see in this series, let me know too. And otherwise, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.